bearings that we need to install on the crankshaft. Before we can install the crankshaft into one of the crankshaft housing halves, and this being the number three bearing. You notice there's a line up pin that lines up with one of the locating pins in the crankcase. So that would have to line up with the crankcase, but it can be installed this way or that way. Does it make any difference? Not really, because oil holes are in the same position on both sides, so we can install it either way, but we should lubricate it slightly. Give it some initial lubrication. That's good for the braking period, when the first engine first starts and it doesn't get any oil for a moment. And that is your number three bearing right there. And now these go in this order. This gear goes in first, chamfer to the inside, alignment marks to the outs upside so they're visible at the later date. to line up with this carter pin right here, oh, not carter pin, keyway. And now we have to drive that down. Camshaft drive gear has been installed. Make sure you note the locating marks, for the timing marks for the camshaft which are stamped inside on top of the crank on the crankshaft gear. Now we install the spacer. A spacer goes between Should have turned the crankshaft around, I guess. There it is. Now comes up. Now comes the uh, distributor drive, and that also has to line up there, right? Be careful with that, because it's brass. All these three items should be pressed on. However, we don't have a press handy and it's easy to drive them on with a punch and hammer. The only thing you have to be very careful not to damage any of the gears or the brass gear that drives the distributor drive. So always be careful with that. Now to hold everything in place, we have this one snap ring. I doubt if anything would ever come off, but the snap ring is just for double insurance. And that holds, the whole works in the proper position. Let's just make sure it's in the right seat here. There. Seat perfect. And that's it. We have our crankshafts all prepared and ready to go in the case. Put the crankshaft into the crankshaft housing, which consists of three pieces. This one, another one over there someplace. And the third piece here, which goes on the end. The third piece, by the way, holds the last bearing, the crankshaft, the oil pump, fuel pump, and a distributor drive. But that comes later. Get that for now. This is the crankshaft. It goes into this side of the housing. We're using this side because it has the locating pins right there. And that's our first job. We put 
these pins in here which locate the bearings and uh, they can't protrude any more than seven millimeters otherwise it interferes with the clearance of the bearing center bearing comes in two halves and <coughs> it's installed first now you might want to just tap that in place for a bit so it fits better like so okay then we install the back bearing onto the crankshaft that can be put in backwards so we have to be careful the locating pin is near the end and the, lo the hole is near the end okay so that goes there and I made a mark to sort of roughly line it up but uh, basically that's it now the whole thing can be inserted with the right two connecting rods facing down of course now we can turn this to line up the locating pin you see how it snapped in then we turn this to line up the locating pin and uh, da -da -da -da. That should be it right there. Okay, there we go. Crankshafts properly. Connecting rods are facing down. This is the uh, gasket for the flywheel, but we won't get to that till later. But I did mark it because it only fits on one way. So at this time we may as well put some of these lifters in. This is a good time to do it because you can't get at it later. Lubricate them. We'll put these lifters in the other half. Of the crankcase, so. And we'll grease them up good because that's what holds it in place when we go to put this half on top of the other half so they don't fall down on us. Okay, that's that. Now we can install, we can install the camshaft. 